Welcome to the world of W.C. Fields, or rather his private world in the bigger Unreal Hollywood world. You see, this is his movie lot trailer, and you, the audience, are his special guests, spirits from his past, who have come to pay their respects. It's July 1941, and Bill is working on his last major film, Never Give a Sucker an Even Break. There have been problems on the set, and his health makes every day a struggle. He's lonely. He suffers illusions. To make matters worse, the Hayes office has ordered Bill to eliminate his best jokes from the script. Fields is responding. Dear Mr. Brain, in regards to the motion picture production code and my latest picture, God himself lacks your discerning eye. With the country nearly at war and the economy still in the doldrums, I wholeheartedly agree laughter leads to moral decadence and encourages our enemies. Best, Bill Fields. I'm going to have a friend throw an Indian titsi fly into your soup the next time you dine at the studio. <laughs> there it goes again. Huh? Nothing. That does it. I will forthwith change my drinking habits. From now on, nothing stronger than beer. Before breakfast. <laughs> I seem to be sitting at a crossroads between art and nature, trying to determine where delirium tremors live off, and Hollywood begins. Ah! Curses! First it's the hands, the coordination. Then the mind begins to play little tricks on one. Noxus of the Canoxus. Why so glum, Bill? I'm having hallucinations. You mean, like you're hearing voices? Oh, exactly. Do you answer? Worse, I perform for them. Your imagination has always been your best friend. And worst enemy. And now death. That fellow in the bright nightgown. Excuse me, old sod, but for someone who once called himself the silent humorist, you are not very silent or humorous. Nobody asked you. Hey, didn't I turn you off? You tried. Wait a minute. Radios don't talk. I beg your pardon. We talk all the time. I mean, oh, what do I mean? I mean, radios don't answer. Of course we answer. We just don't listen. Mother of Pearl! I'm having a delusion! I prefer the word dream. Delusion has such negative connotations. Perhaps I'm on the cusp of a nightmare, a la Scrooge in A Christmas Carol. More likely delirium tremors, as in The Drunkard. Or Toto in The Wizard of Oz. I was almost in that, you know. Then you understand the concept. Now tap your heels together and whisper the magic words. Wait. Poetry, like chance, also has its magical charm. Therefore, I shall read one of my own poems. A drink with something in it by the barn fields. There is something about a martini. A tingle remarkably pleasant. A mellow a yellow martini. I'm glad I have one at present. That is the worst segue into a dream I have ever heard. Try something else. Delusions. You're drowning me up here by opening a bottle of champagne instead. <laughs> Better!
Aha! I have thwarted the malevolent machinations of our scurrilous enemies. In short, I have arrived. Maybe it's because of delirium tremors or the pressure to be funny when so many things in his life are not. But during the course of this hallucination, Bill finds many old friends from his past in the audience. Madam, could you come up here, please? I need you to stand there and face this direction. Thank you. And good sir, would you mind joining us up here? Stand here and face out there. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Madam, do you notice the striking similarities between these two? <laughs> then you have better eyes than I have? No. Something is missing, and I think I know what it is. <laughs> Here, do me this favor and put this on. <coughs> and this too, please. I will have to sanitize that at another time. <laughs> Aha, I was right. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present to you tonight the world's greatest novelty act, the identical Punkwa twins, Brentwood, the world's shortest giant, and Elwood, the world's tallest midget. Brentwood, the world's tallest midget, and Elwood, the world's shortest giant. They baffle science. I admit to the untrained eye this conclusion may seem erroneous, their facsimiles appearing to have little in common. That is due to an unfortunate incident that occurred on the outer banks of Upper Mongolia. Or was it the upper banks of Outer Mongolia? Regardless, the two had just completed a successful engagement at a Tibetan house of prayer when suddenly a lion, a ferocious lion of a feline extraction, grabbed Brentwood, uh, no, uh, grabbed Brentwood and dragged him under the jungle canopy. Sir, you say there are no ferocious lions on the outer banks of Upper Mongolia? Have you no imagination? Have you not heard of Fred Camo's pantomime flea circus? This particular lion had recently left their employment on account of a salary dispute. <sighs> they say his departure created quite an uproar. Don't blame the messenger. By a curious coincidence, I was canoeing in the area when I overheard the lad's tortured cries for help with no regard for my own personal safety, a bowie knife in one hand, a Burmese goat in the other, I wrenched the mangled boy's head from the lion's jaw, dragging my canoe behind me. How else to explain such an incontinent continence, such a pugnacious petulance? The wounds have healed over nicely. Don't give up hope. Modern medicine can perform miracles. Throughout the hallucination, Bill continues to recognize old friends and recalls his happy run for the presidency in 1940. My fellow citizens, Prohibition of alcohol has failed. Prohibition of candy makes better sense. When I think how candy rots the bicuspids and crunchers of the little nippers, I could cry. Therefore, as president, I shall turn off all drinking fountains in the public parks, ban candy from the schools, and reconstitute the value of the dollar to the time when George Washington tossed one across the Delaware. Of course, the dollar went a lot further back then. And my final promise to you today is to fire the dog as man's best friend and replace him with, drum roll please, 
Oh, you can do better than that. Drum roll, please. Whiskey. Think about it. No one ever got fleas from whiskey. No one has to walk or groom alcohol because alcohol takes care of itself. In the long history of this great nation, not once has whiskey needed to be wormed. I admit, whiskey has a nasty habit of running out, but then so does a dog. <laughs> to whiskey, man's truest friend. The only other libation of a similar accoutrement is purple bark sarsaparilla. A medicinal concoction created by the Wana Wallet Indians designed to both taste good and be good for you. Sir, one slurp and that bald spot will transform into a flirtatious pelt of curls. Madam, one sip and those pesky nose hairs shall become a thing of the past. And for the rest of you, Purple bark sarsaparilla, it cures hoarseness. Hoarseness. I say, it cures hoarseness. Sorry, limit fives to a customer. Uh, during the filming of Tilly and Gus, I poured a small dram into the obnoxious baby Leroy's bottle, turning the little nipper into a trooper. He staggered around the set like a Barrymore. Barrymore? John Barrymore? <laughs> he has to be around here someplace. Jack! Jack, where are you? Ah, oh, there he is. Jack! Ladies and gentlemen, my very good friend, John Barrymore, still the greatest profile in movie history. Jack, now that you are here, a spirit more dead than alive, you are in a position to answer one of life's most perplexing questions. We all know there's heaven in alcohol, but is there alcohol in heaven? Sadly, even the best dreams and illusions must come to an end. Bill, we have to go. Your director is already angry, and the producer has threatened to take you to court. All right, all right. But first a toast. Here's to the lot of you. The forgotten entertainers. The funny men. The comics. Those who understand the risk. Those who know that when the audience laughs, it's only for a moment. And when they stop, the silence is worse than death. And to Bacchus, the one God who seems to understand what it's like to be human, always facing that fellow in the bright nightgown. And Bill toasts you too for watching this excerpt from It's a Funny Old Life and hopes you will book a performance. For more information, thank you.